Welcome to the first day of MPB's Summer Learning Family Fun Days. We are excited that you are here to power up with us today. Thanks to our sponsors, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi and the WK Catalog Foundation for helping MPB education to make this event happen. If you have not registered yet, go to education.mpbonline.org to do so. We will send everyone who registers and participates a prize in the mail. Meet me here each day through Wednesday at 1030 so I can let you know what's going on. You can find all the details at education.mpbonline.org. This event is being streamed live on Facebook at MPB Education and MPB, on MPB Twitter, MPB YouTube, MPB Education YouTube, in our new television channel, MPB Classroom TV. Let's power up for today. We have an activity and a special treat for you today. Wouldn't it be cool to have your fruits and vegetables growing in your backyard? Let's take a field trip to see how we can make that happen. After our field trip, we will do a fun activity. Find activity details at education.mpbonline.org. Hi, welcome to Footprint Farms. Today we got some great things for you, some tips you won't believe and how much fun it is. I'm so happy to have you with me today at Footprint Farms. We have a lot that we can talk about. And guess what? I'm right here in your city. I'm close by. So what I'm doing, you can do too. Today I want to talk to you about something that's yummy and good. It comes in all different colors. Can you guess what that is? Mmm, not a tomato. Nope, but I'll tell you what it is. It is a pepper. Now let me tell you, peppers are our friends. We don't realize how important peppers are to us and when we're eating all our favorite foods, but peppers are. In this case, this is bell peppers. And our bell peppers look like this before it becomes a bell pepper. Now let me tell you what happens after you put this into the earth or into your pot. We're gonna plant these peppers and we're putting them in the soil. This is some of our rich soil. Let me show you what it looks like under here. You see this? This is gold. This is just beautiful. And this soil has nutrients in it from what we've already worked in over the years. So what we're doing now is that again, you're just going in, making sure you're covering this, which is also soil, and from our planting, and you just go around it, and you just make a hole, not too big, just to make sure you're covering the top. But this soil is so rich and will put more nutrients in the plant as it grows. This is gonna give it time for it to uh, come together with the earth. It will come as one. This root will come into the earth and more roots will grow and it will be standing tall. And this is going to be a bell pepper. Ah, you can smell this. You can smell how green it is. And you know what? Pepper leaves are just like leaves. They're gonna taste just like the fruit. You can even eat these. This is gonna do two things after this. It's going to actually make these pretty little flowers. Can you see these? Look, see what it's gonna look like? It's gonna make these pretty little bitty flowers. So if you look very close, I can show you what it will look like after the flower. Yep, if you can look right down in there, this is what the bell pepper looks like before it grows and grows. And every three days, it's gonna double its size. So in another three to two weeks, we're gonna have a bell pepper that's this big. And like all babies, just like you, it grows up. And when it grows up, it's gonna be a beautiful pepper. It's gonna look just like this. In this case, this one is gonna be a green pepper. 
You can take this, just cut it, and eat it just like this. Of course, you always wash everything first. You wash it, then you take your knife, or you can take it and break it. And guess what? When you break it and you break it enough, guess what's inside? Yes, seeds. And do you know you can take these seeds out, let it dry in your window seal, and go back and plant those seeds too. So peppers are good. You can just eat it just like this. It's a sweet taste. You also can have mommy put it in your salad or some other things. But for you, eating this just like this is going to make your mouth say, mmm. It's a bell pepper, and it's good. So you may ask, why should I know about this stem or this pepper? It's important that you know where your food comes from and how food is grown, and everyone can grow. You don't have to be a big farmer, and you have to be a grocery store to have your own food. So it's important to know that you can take this one little seed, put it in the soil, use some water on it, and talk to it. It will grow and make this beautiful plant. It's easy to do. Anyone can do it. You can do it in your coffee can or in your flower pot. So remember, it goes from this to making the flower to see how it grows up. And when it grows up, it looks like this. Mississippi has several community gardens across the state. Some of these gardens are used for educational purposes for students and adults. And at others, volunteers help to grow and harvest fruits and vegetables that will enhance their community with healthy food resources. Here's an introduction to a few community gardens we found around the state. In His Step Ministries has a teaching garden located at 3528 North Liberty in Canton, Mississippi. You can contact them by calling 601-859-5708. Rosie's Garden is a community garden located in Rankin County, Mississippi, where individuals can cultivate, grow, harvest, and deliver produce to anyone in need of a good meal. For more information, visit rosiesgarden.org. The Jackson Medical Mall Foundation creates and manages a community garden to help eliminate health disparities. For more information, call 601-982-8467 or visit their website at jacksonmedicalmall.org. The Society of St. Andrew has volunteer opportunities at community gardens and farms across the state. Go to endhunger.org slash Mississippi to find volunteer opportunities in your community. The Vicksburg Community Garden Park is a community empowerment project by the City of Vicksburg, Alcorn State University Extension Program, and Shape Up Vicksburg. It helps to increase neighborhood access to fresh fruit and vegetables. For more details, visit shapeupvicksburg.com and their Facebook page at Shape Up Vicksburg. St. John's Day School in Laurel, Mississippi has a teaching garden for their students. Students created their garden with faculty, staff, and parents. For more information, visit sjdslaurel.com or call 601-428-4350 or email office at sjdslaurel.com. The Mississippi State Community Garden is on the Mississippi State University campus and was created for students and staff to grow healthy food on campus. It is open for the public to tour. For more information, visit communitygarden.msstate.edu. The Rosedale Freedom Project, or RFP, is an after-school program located in Rosedale, Mississippi that works with students in middle and high school who use the community garden as an outlet to learn through experience and create social change in their community. To get involved, email rosedalefreedomproject at gmail.com or call 757-876-3646. They are also on Facebook at Rosedale Freedom Project. TAP, or Talk About the Problems, is a peer mediation program 
making a difference in schools throughout the South. In Jackson, Wingfield High School's TAP participants created a community garden to help students expand their leadership skills. For more information, visit isjl.org slash tap. Community gardens are created in many ways. If one of the gardens shared in this video is in your community, see how you can be a part of it. Or help power up your community by creating a community garden. For information and resources on how to create a community garden, visit extension.msstate.com. .edu Let's talk about gardening. It's just growing flowers and food and butterflies and other things and having a good time where you feel like you're a big part of what's going on. A lot of young people help grow their own food by planting seeds in the ground and taking care of the plants until they grow into something good to eat. Sometimes there isn't a lot of room to have a big garden, but you could do it in even an old boot. This is a garden made from an old car tire filled with good dirt and painted a pretty color. As you learn to garden, you'll also learn how to take care of plants which need sunshine and water. Just remember, it should be your garden where you feel good about what you do. There are many places with the children's gardens you can visit and get some really good fun ideas. Some schools have their own places to grow flowers and vegetables. They can be pretty big, or they can be small and fun and filled with recycled things. You can grow plants in even big bags of potting soil you get from the garden store. Or you can use or recycle old pots and cans. Anything that can hold dirt can be a garden. Why not have fun growing stuff in unusual containers that nobody else has done? Have fun. One of my favorite kinds of recycled containers for gardening is an old car tire, but be sure to paint them pretty so they make it a special place. Children can learn about using tools in a garden, in this case, making a special garden box. These children made an easy box to set on the ground and fill with good dirt. A box filled with dirt is called a raised bed, and it's very easy to plant with flowers and vegetables. After planting a raised bed, you can enjoy gardening all year long, planting whenever you feel like it and the weather is right. This group of children dug a long winding row in the dirt behind a library. After digging a hole, they planted lots of little bulbs in the fall, which next spring became a wonderful curve of flowers, and they can plant stuff there all year long. One of the most fun things about gardening is picking what you grow. These tomatoes were planted in the spring and they grow on vines. Some young gardeners prefer smaller tomatoes, which are cute and sweet to eat. These tomatoes grow on vines and need something to climb on, something high to climb on. So why not make a teepee garden and plant stuff around the edge to grow up on the sticks? You can even paint the sticks to be fun. Some vegetables grow under the ground. You can plant pieces of potatoes in pots of dirt and water them and let them grow into pretty plants. After a while, you can dig around and find the new potatoes are growing in the roots. There are white ones, there are red ones, all different kinds of potatoes, and they grow in the ground. Some vegetables, like colorful lettuce, grow really well in the winter and spring when it's cold outside. They're pretty, and you can eat them. Others, like this pretty red okra, need a lot of hot weather and grow best in the summertime. You plant them in the spring, and they grow all summer long. Another fun summer vegetable is sweet potatoes, which grow under colorful vines. The vines are pretty and they make flowers, and in the fall, you've got sweet potatoes you can dig out of the dirt. Flowers can grow all year long and can be interesting to look at up close. Many plants you can grow have soft leaves that are fun to touch. Some are stickery though, and you got to be careful. Other plants smell really good when you rub their leaves, and you can use them to make things smell nice, or even to cut up and use in the kitchen to add flavor to soup, and to even to make pizza with. These plants are called herbs and they smell great in the garden or they could be made into special meals. Wouldn't it be great to help cook a meal with plants you grow yourself? You can add some herbs like mint to water and let the sunshine turn it into sweet tea that tastes almost like candy. Many gardens have surprise visitors, including insects that can eat your plants. This lady beetle came along to help the garden by eating the bad bugs. If you plant big flowers and lots of them, you'll have butterflies come to visit. There are many different kinds of butterflies and moths. And if you're careful, you can learn how gentle they are. Don't be afraid of them. They don't bite or sting, and they kind of tickle. 
Butterflies start out as caterpillars, which don't bite, they don't sting, but they're very interesting to watch as they eat leaves in your garden. After a few days, the caterpillars turn into cocoons, where they spend a few weeks turning into butterflies. This is a butterfly that came out of a cocoon and is already starting to feed on flowers in the garden. The more flowers you plant, the more butterflies and other fun insects you can learn about. An easy way to help insects and birds is to make a place that holds water for them, like this homemade bird bath. You can even make a small water garden for frogs and minnows and plants that like water. If you're really lucky, it might attract a dragonfly, and dragonflies eat lots of mosquitoes. Bird feeders can be made by cutting holes in milk jugs and hanging them in trees. An easy birdhouse can be made from a can with a hole cut in the lid. This one has sticks tied around the sides to make it more interesting. Lots of different kinds of wildlife will be attracted to your garden. Some is really fun to enjoy. You might even make a little fairy garden with stones and bits of moss found under trees. Fallen leaves can be colorful and fun to collect, but they're more than just pretty. You can make fun creatures by gluing different shaped leaves onto pieces of paper. A lot of gardeners don't throw their leaves away. They make a leaf pile where the leaves can turn into a special kind of dirt called compost. These children are taking old plants and flowers from the garden and piling them onto the compost pile where worms and other little creatures will slowly eat them and turn them into something good for the garden. It's really important to recycle. This is called a compost bin, where you can make things to hold the compost in one place and make it easier to take care of. If a compost pile isn't very pretty, make it a special place to welcome worms and let grown-ups know you're doing a good job of recycling. This is what leaves and other stuff turn into in a compost pile. Add it to your garden dirt to help grow really good plants. It's called compost. A garden is a good place to learn about other than just growing plants, including science. You can have a rain gauge to measure the rainfall, a thermometer to see what the temperature is, and even a ribbon to show how strong the wind is blowing. You can also learn to make your own plants by cutting pieces off of other plants, sticking them in water, and watch them grow new roots. You can share these plants with others later. A fun way to make the garden extra special is by making a scarecrow. Even a plastic plate or a milk jug can be turned into a head with a funny face. These easy scarecrows are made with a stick, a clothes hanger, and old clothes from your closet. Many children enjoy taking pictures of their flowers in their garden and sharing with others. One of the most fun things you can do in the garden is putting flowers in vases, like these children are doing for a flower shop. These girls are looking for different shapes, including something long and skinny, something round, and something frilly, different shapes to make a flower arrangement. You can make a simple flower design using plastic straws stuck into potatoes. What kind of shaped flowers can you find? The main thing about gardening is to have fun while learning. Make your garden your special place with different kinds of containers and lots of colorful paint. You can even make a long rainbow garden by looking for flowers in each of the colors of a rainbow. This one has a pot of gold at the end. Your toys can make a garden a magical place where you can make up your own stories or just put some fun things in the garden to make you smile. This is just a bottle on a stick and an old bowling ball, but doesn't it make it look fun? Again, anything that can hold a little dirt can be made into a garden. Have fun trying new things. And remember, the grown-ups who taught you things in the garden were once children who learned to have fun themselves. The best gardeners are those who share what they grow and what they know with others. So find a sunny spot and a pot full of dirt, some flowers and vegetables, and colorful things to make you your own special garden. That's all gardening is about. Have fun. Hello, boys and girls. I am Jasmine Harvey, Student Engagement Specialist here at MPB in the Education Department. Wasn't it cool learning about creating your own garden? I love to grow my own strawberries and potatoes and, of course, my favorite carrots in my garden. What would you like to grow in your garden? Oh wow, that's so cool. Today we are going to make a scarecrow together. Do you know what a scarecrow is and why it's important to have one in your garden? That's right. They help to keep unwanted pests from eating the fruits and vegetables that you work so hard to grow. Scarecrows also help the birds from swooping down and taking a bite of your tomatoes too. So let's get started. Don't forget, your scarecrow can be scary, pretty, fancy, or as wild as you want it to be with your creativity. You may use some of these materials, but you can also substitute whatever you like. So to get started, we'll need some colorful construction paper, popsicle stick, glue stick, crayons, 
and scissors. And of course, what is artwork without decoration? So you can use stickers, googly eyes, or buttons. It's whatever you choose. So let's get started making our scarecrow so that we make sure that our garden is safe. First, what we're going to start with is you can pick whichever color that you would like. We're going to draw the head of our scarecrow. So I am going to use this tan color paper. And to make the head of our scarecrow, we're just going to draw a circle. Or you can use whatever shape you like. Circle, square, triangle, however you want it to be. So let's start. I'm going to use a circle. So I'm going to draw a circle. And so to make sure that you all can see it, I'm going to go over with the Sharpie mark, okay? So we're going to draw the head of our scarecrow. And your head can be big, it could be small, it could be medium. It's whatever you like your scarecrow to look like. So I'm going to finish the head. Here, we draw on the head. Okay, so once you have your head drawn, we can go in and start adding all of the different facials. So you can have eyes, nose, ears, a mouth, whichever you choose. So I'm going to take my googly eyes that I have, and I'm going to glue those to the face, okay? If you don't have googly eyes, it's okay. You can draw your eyes however you want them to look. So I'm going to take my glue stick, and I'm going to put my eyes on my scarecrow. A trick with glue stick is when you're gluing anything down, if you do a little press on it, it can secure to make sure that it sticks. So I'm going to put the glue on here. I'm going to take my eyes and I'm going to add them to my head. So here we go. Got one eye right here. We're going to press just a little bit, make sure that it sticks. And then we're going to take our second eye and we're going to do the same thing. Just press a little bit, make sure that it sticks. So we're going to let that sit for a little while, and then we can move on to all of the other facials. So we can add our nose, we add our ears, we add our mouth, whichever you choose. I'm going to go in and draw a mouth. And you can make your scarecrow smiling, you can make him frowning, you can make him look scared. It's whatever you choose. I'm going to make my scarecrow look very happy. Although it is used to scare all the birds and pests away from eating up all our good vegetables and fruits and everything that we choose to grow in our garden. So I'm going to draw my smiley face. Okay. Draw it here. And just to add a little color, I'm going to take my crayons and I'm going to go over my smiley face. Okay, and I'm going to use a brown crayon so that you all will be able to see it. So I'm going to take the brown and we're going to color, color our smiley face. Can't wait to see which emotion you choose for your scarecrow. Let's see. Right, we're going to color that in, fill in these spots with our brown smiley face, okay? And so now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna draw a little bitty nose, just a little bitty nose, there we go. I have my nose here. I think we should add some ears too, what do you think? Okay, let's add some ears, I'm gonna add some ears. I'm gonna add some ears here, okay. So we have our ears, we have our face, and like I said, you can add any colors. You can color your face, whichever you choose. I think I'm going to color the ears blue. Let's add some color to our scarecrow. Okay. So I'm going to color his ear blue. And I'm going to color the other ear blue as well so that they can match. So we're going to add in our ears. And so I made my scarecrow hair super big so I can make sure that the birds can see it. So now that I have my face ready and my hair ready for my scarecrow, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut the head out, okay? We're only cutting out the head and the ears or whatever else you choose to put on your scarecrow face. So I'm going to start cutting. Be sure that you always have a parent or guardian around you when you're cutting, okay? 
So I'm gonna cut my head out and then I'm gonna show you what I have once I get finished. So I'm cutting, cutting. Cutting, cutting, cutting. I'm almost finished with the head of my scarecrow. Okay, so I have my head cut out. I'm gonna put that to the side so that you all can see. So do a little trim in here. Okay, and we have our head. So I finished cutting out the head of my scarecrow. I'm gonna sit that to the side. I wanna make sure that those eyes dry. So I'm gonna sit that to the side for now. Now let's move on to step two. So step two of our scarecrow would be, of course, the body. So to make our scarecrow body, we wanna take our popsicle stick and you can use whichever color you like, purple, green, orange, or just tan. So we're gonna take our popsicle stick and we're gonna place it in front of us, okay? So that we make sure that we have it in place when we get ready to put our head and everything together. Now, the fun part is we get to make an outfit for our scarecrow. Now, sometimes you may see scarecrows and they may have on overalls, they may have on a shirt, they may have on pants. So it's up to you to be creative with what you want your scarecrow to look like. So I'm going to get some colorful construction paper, whichever color that you choose. I think I'm gonna choose green and orange and I am gonna make my outfit. And I'm gonna choose to make my scarecrow a overall outfit with a shirt, okay? So to start, all you have to do is trace the clothing on your color paper and then we're gonna cut it out. So I'm gonna start with my overalls. And it's okay if you don't know how to draw overalls, you can draw pants or a shirt, or you can ask your parent or guardian to help you. So I'm gonna start with my overalls, which will be orange. So I'm gonna start and trace here. Okay, and I'm gonna go here, go down. Here, draw the other side, and then I'm gonna draw the legs. I think I'm gonna have some super long overalls. Here, all right. So we have our overalls here. Okay, so I have my overalls, and now I'm gonna go ahead and draw my shirt as well, so we can cut them out at the same time. So I'm gonna draw me a nice shirt. I think I'm gonna do short sleeve because it's gonna be pretty hot. So I'm gonna draw a short sleeve shirt. Make sure I scarecrow and nice and cool while it's protecting our garden. So here, and I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna draw the other arm. Come down and we have our shirt. All right, so I have my shirt and I have my overalls. What did you all choose to put on your scarecrow? I can't wait to see it. So now we're gonna cut out our shirt and then we're gonna cut out our overalls, okay? Make sure you always have a parent or guardian around you when you're cutting. So let's get this the shirt out. Okay, here. I'm almost finished with my shirt. All right, got the arm. There we go. So I'm gonna sit my shirt to the side. Okay. And now I'm gonna cut out my overalls. Almost finished. Okay. Mm 
Okay, so we have our overalls cut out. Now that we have all our clothing cut out, we're going to just start putting it all together, okay? So we're going to take our head and we're going to place it at the top of our popsicle stick, okay? Remember, this is the body. This is what's going to hold the body together. So we're going to take our popsicle stick and we're just going to do some placing right now. So I'm going to get my head put on the popsicle stick and I'm going to take my shirt and put it where it fits. And then I'm going to put my overalls on top. Let's see, I think this is great right here. Okay, so we have that in place. Okay, you want to make sure that you have your clothing in place so when you get ready to glue, it'll be easy. So before we glue, I want to add some hair to my scarecrow. This is optional, you don't have to do it, but I think it'll just be fun and cool just to add some hair. So I'm going to draw the hair and then we're going to glue together. So here I go, I'm going to draw, I think I'm going to do a big curly fro, let's see. Here. I'm going to outline it so that you all can see it, or will be able to see it once I finish cutting it out. So, big fro. Oh. So I have my hair, I'm going to cut that out quickly. Like I say, this is optional, but if you choose, you can add hair to your scarecrow as well. And remember, there's no such thing as perfect art. All art is perfect, okay? As long as you're being creative, all art is perfect. So I have my hair cut out. I'm going to sit that to the side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start putting our scarecrow together. So first, we're going to glue our head to our stick. Now you can put the head at this end, on the other end, it's whatever you choose. So I'm going to put mine at the top. And so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the stick. And remember what I say about gluing. Once you put it on there, just do a little bit of press to make sure that it sticks. So I'm going to Put it on there and I'm going to press down just a little bit. Make sure that it sticks. Okay? So I have my head attached. Then now I'm going to go in and add my clothing. So since I did overalls, I am going to put my shirt on first because the overalls will go on top of the shirt. So I'm going to glue my shirt down. Put a little bit of glue here. And I'm going to put my shirt right here. I'm going to do a little bit of press. Make sure that it sticks, okay? And then I'm gonna take my overalls, put a little glue here on top of the shirt, and then I'm gonna stick right here. Make sure that it sticks on there. Okay, and what I say, you do a little bit of press to make sure that it sticks. So here we go, I'm gonna put those overalls on there. There we go, I think I'm gonna just cut this little piece here, cut here, okay. All right, so we have our head and we have our clothing on our scarecrow. Now, which was optional, I'm gonna add the hair to my scarecrow. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glue here, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of press to make sure that it sticks. glue there. I'm going to put the hair on. There we go. All right, so we have our scarecrow put all together. We have the face, the clothing, the hair, if you chose to put hair on yours. And now for the finale and the fun part. 
Decorations. What's a scarecrow without decorations? So this is a time where you can use stickers, you can use buttons, you can use crayons, markers, color pencils, whatever you want to use to make your scarecrow come alive. So I am going to add on some buttons for my overalls and then I'm going to add in just a little bit of stickers to make it shine. And then once we put it all together, I'll be able to show you what we created. Okay, so I'm going to start putting on my buttons with glue. Here, I'm gonna pick some cool colors. Let's see, what y'all think? Mm, red, orange, green. I think I'm gonna use those colors. So I'm gonna have an orange button, and I have a red button, and a green. And I'm gonna add that to my scarecrow. All right, remember, be creative. So now I'm going to take some stickers and I'm going to add some stickers to the overalls here and I have a star sticker. So I'm going to put a star here and let's add maybe two more stickers. Put a cloud here and then I'm going to put a star, another star here. So we got it all put together. Oh wow, this is great. I cannot wait to see what you all came up with for your scarecrow. So now that I have all my decorations placed on my scarecrow, we're finished. And I'm gonna show you exactly what mine look like. All right, so here we go. We have my scarecrow. So of course, what's a scarecrow without a name? We have to name my scarecrow. So I'm gonna name my scarecrow, mm, let's say I'm gonna name him Sam. So this is Sam, Scarecrow Sam. He's gonna protect my garden from all the little animals and birds that may try to come in and eat all of my vegetables. I hope you enjoyed creating your scarecrow with me. And I really hope that you enjoyed this activity and I cannot wait to see all of your different scarecrows. Remember to submit all of your scarecrows to the MPB education website, which is education.mpbonline.org. I'll see you later. Thank you. Hey guys, what do you think we're talking about today? Tomatoes! That's right, it's time to catch up with tomatoes. Ed goes to school just like you. Ruby has to learn and study too. There's reading, science, math, and history. But he really loves learning how to be healthy. He's learning all about the best food for his plate. And he's learning that exercise helps him feel great. This healthy information with physical education where he gets his inspiration and his motivation. We find him in conversation with his friends' participation in learning situations. Yeah, and his name is Ed, and this is what he said. He's Ed Sam. in his head in form of a rhyme that you can learn and sing all the time because it's not hocus pocus being healthy keeps your focus we're in this together so we can all feel better so you better be ready and his name is not eddie he's ed said what is the use ed said he got no excuse hey guys today we're in um <laughs> looks like we're in someone's backyard i thought we were talking about tomatoes today we are over this way. Oh, over there. <laughs> cool. Oh, so here are the tomatoes. And here's my friend Kevin to tell us all about his tomato garden. Hello, everybody. So how did you grow these? Well, I went to the co-op and got the seeds. Then I had to till up the soil and plant them. Then I had to make sure they got enough sunlight and water every day. Then when the fruit was ripe, I gathered them up. Whoa, wait, you said when the fruit gets ripe. You meant to say when the veggie gets ripe, right? Because you know, tomatoes are a vegetable. Mm -hmm. I used to think that too, but it's actually a fruit. What? I'm going to need some more info on that one. Okay, now check this out. If something is a fruit, there are seeds on the inside. If something is a vegetable, we use all parts of the plant. Think for a minute about all the different kinds of vegetables we have. Hmm. Take lettuce, for example. We eat the leaves of the lettuce plant. Now, think about uh, carrots. Um, oh yeah, we eat the root part of the carrot. That's right. 
Okay, what part of the broccoli plant do we eat? Hmm, we eat the stems and those little green things on top. <laughs> That's right, those are called the crown. Oh. Okay. Now what about corn? Oh dear. Um, yeah. <laughs> now that's a tricky one. It is. We eat the seeds of the corn plant. Oh, okay. I think I get it. So since the tomatoes have all of their seeds on the inside, that makes them a fruit, right? You got it. <laughs> but not the kind of fruit you eat in a fruit salad because that would be gross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I love about tomatoes? What's that? There are so many different kinds and shapes and sizes and varieties. So uh, what kind are these right here? These are called better boys. Oh, cool. What other kinds of colors and choices do they come in? Because all I know is red and round. Well, there's that, of course, but there's also green and yellow and white and black. And they range in size all the way from the little cherry tomatoes to the big boys. Oh, that is so cool. So many choices. But now tell me, which way do you like to eat them best? Straight off the vine. Oh, that sounds cool. Grab me one, too. Yep, tomatoes are my new favorite fruit. I hope you give them a try or even try your hand at growing them. This has been Ed Said with a message for your head. There's no excuse. Put it to use. Bye. Hello, everyone. I'm your friend, MPD. Have you joined the Kids Club yet? Ask your parent to sign up. You must be ages 4 to 12 to join. Kids Club members get all kinds of cool stuff like membership cards and stickers, a monthly newsletter, a birthday card, shout outs for your birthday on television and the webpage, and even invites to super special club members only events. To join, visit education.mpbonline.org. Wasn't that fun? Felder Rushing knows all about gardening. You can hear him on MPB Think Radio every Friday at 9 a.m. To learn so much more, and community gardens are a great idea that helps others in the community. I can't wait to start my garden. And I think I'll make a cute scarecrow for my garden. Once you have your scarecrows complete, ask your parent to share them with us on social media. Parents, don't forget to tag MPB Education. Visit education.mpbonline.org to prepare for tomorrow's activity. See you tomorrow at 10.30, full steam ahead.